Hello, Rob Venn here, and in this video we're going to be looking at shot types, camera angles and mise-en-scene in magazine photography. This is specifically going to be for G324 Advanced Portfolio, so A2 basically. So we're going to be looking at the conventions of magazine photography. You should be pretty much familiar with this from AS, but this is basically a bit of a refresher. So we're going to be looking at assessment objectives 1, 2 and 4, demonstrating knowledge and understanding of media concepts, context and critical debates, using terminology appropriately and with accurate and coherent written expression, applying knowledge and understanding to show how meaning is created while analysing media products and evaluating your own practical work, and demonstrate the ability to undertake appropriate research and apply it. So basically what we're looking at today needs to be mentioned in your magazine analysis. Okay, your basic shot types, you should know these. We've got your close shots, uh, obviously extreme close-up, you're not really going to get in magazines really to be honest. Uh, but you've got close-ups, medium close-ups, which of course is from the chest up. Medium shots from the waist up. Medium long shots, which are from knees up. And a long shot, which shows the entire body. You should know those from your TV drama. So... Shot types. Obviously, we've got close shots, as you can see, head and shoulders. This is actually quite, not not quite an extreme close-up, but a very close-up. Um, we've got your medium close-ups, which is going to be when your most common kinds of shot types on your magazine covers: head, shoulders, and you've got your medium shot, which is from the waist up. Um, Note this little creativity we've got in these magazines um, because they're free magazines, um, unlike a say a music magazine you did last year they can be more creative they can be more imaginative they don't have to have as much in the way of cover lines on them but they do require excellent photography again more shot types medium sh long shot that's cutting people off at the knees again look at a group shot for a band notice how the shoulders are overlapping and the heads are very close together same with this one here savages long shot you can see their entire bodies Camera angles, you've got your basics, your level shot, which is level with the eye line, high angle and low angle. There is, of course, also the canted angle. Um, that's a canted angle look. Um, you know, high angle looking down on your subjects. Um, whilst this can make people look small, weak, uh, powerless, intimidated, doesn't always work like that. Sometimes it's actually a pretty good way of being able to fit everybody into your picture. Quite a big band there. If they were all stretched in a line, you wouldn't be able to see most of them. But by putting some in the background here, I and mean, two layers of them, we can see them all. So a high angle shot helps us to do that. Um, again, level shot, level with this these guys' eye lines. Um, low angle shot, looking up at them. Again, big group looking up at them helps you be able to spread them out a little bit but you know very carefully composed that one because talking about your mise-en-scene which is of course the arrangement of scenery and stage properties in a play um, <clears throat> literally means putting on the stage um, obviously we're talking about everything that could be seen on a screen or in our case on a magazine cover in an image what kind of things do you want to talk about props Costumes, locations, makeup, lighting, and colour. Obviously, we can look at colour in a lot more detail in the other video I did on colour connotations. So, think about props that are appropriate. Said it before, or say it again, unless you were doing like a folk magazine, I do not want to see anybody with acoustic guitar. I'm sick of the sight of them. But look. Groove Armada, we're obviously going for a kind of a, a techno kind of theme. Lasers, sequencers, laptops, DJ mixing desks. Typical of that kind of genre. Again, this guy here with his boombox. Obviously associates with him in some way or another. Um, Taylor Swift here with her microphone, which he's using as a prop. Um, little thing, but look at how the colours 
are reflected, like that pink laser there is reflected in here. Um, the fact that hype here reflects the color of her dress. Iconography, things that can be encoded with a meaning so it represents something else. This is a cover from Now Then magazine. What could represent Sheffield better than Henderson's Relish? Um, also, it's Pete McKee, popular artist in Sheffield, local chap. You see his artwork all over the place. So, very iconographic of Sheffield. Over here, these guys, Union flag waistcoats. Very, you know, um, iconographic of Britain. Particularly when it's looking at sovereignty issues. Costumes. The people in your magazine have to look the part. You know, as I said before, they shouldn't look like you know, you've just dragged your mates out of some classroom and randomly photographed them. You know, the leather jacket, symbolic of rebellion, her bangs here, her fringe, hiding her eyes. She's looking pretty gothy, pretty emo, pretty indie. Again, this chap here with his fedora on, his leather jacket, again, you know, the part of the image. You've got Well I Am over here with his glasses and his driving gloves and the Beats headphones. You know, it's a look, it's a style. You know, it's been carefully chosen, carefully constructed. They have to look the part, basically. Locations. Again, now then, looking typically Sheffield. You know, bit, bit of a dump here. Typical Sheffield architecture. Um, I think it's down by the bus station. Could be wrong. Um, but over here in Northeast Times, we've got, you know, sommeliers in, you know, the wine room of this hotel. Hotel Tavan. Wine, obviously, in it. So, you know, it matches. It's the appropriate location, appropriate costumes. Makeup. Makeup you can use quite expressionistically. Look at this kind of 80s look she's got going on here. Um, you know, this adamant style makeup here, her eyes have been done really carefully. Soft focus photography to give it that kind of old school look. Um, again, very carefully made up here. Looks like you made an effort, they look tidy, they look like they are models, not you know, your randomly chosen mates. Put some time and effort into the way your people look. Your lighting, standard typical three point lighting. Um, nice plain white background with a um, a light being shone onto it um, to give us that, like a backlight to give us that um, three dimensional depth. Your key lights coming in from, sorry, your main lights coming in from this kind of key light and then your fill lights coming in from this direction. Same with this one, key light coming in that direction, fill light coming in that direction. And the backlight giving that three dimensional pop. A bit of rim lighting as well, look to make her hair glow. Um, this is your typical setup look. Your main key light gives you main light for your subject. Your fill light, get rid of shadows, backlight to make things pop, give it a bit of three dimensions. Obviously, you can find three point lighting tutorials on the internet on um, YouTube pretty easily. I can also send you some links to those when we get further to the point. So, you can picture your Noel Gallagher. Key light coming from this direction. Look at the way the highlights are reflected on that part of his body. Fill lights coming this way, just get rid of a bit of a shadow. Rim light behind him to give us that kind of glow behind his head. Okay, high key lighting. Lighting that's meant to make the scenery appear natural or realistic. You should what picture here of uh, Wolf Alice being photographed in ordinary outdoor natural lighting. Um, same with this one, Lowell has been carefully composed with a shallow depth of field to make this guy pop up that background. That's not to say it's probably not using some kind of light being bounced onto their face, or his face in particular, so that he's silhouetted against that background. Low key lighting, dark, gloomy, expressionistic. You know, they've been photographed like what appears to be under a boardwalk, maybe on a beach. Um, sunlight behind them, rim lighting them, so they've got the glow around their hair, but they're actually, their faces are quite in darkness. Unusual, that. Um, again, Richard Hawley here, no backlight, maybe a little rim light up here somewhere. Um, no fill light, just pure key light, which is why you've got all these strong shadows, makes them look very moody and, uh, you know, stylish. 
same here with this guy um black and white again very stylish shallow depth of field makes him pop think about color we talked about this one before um the blue and the white and the yellow contrast really nicely and her hair makes her pop out of that background you know the background color matching the color of her dress things like that riot of color in this one really nice but look how difficult it makes it to read the cover lines you might want to put maybe a like a, like a, a banner along there with maybe like a 50 percent opacity or something to make this a little bit easy to read i to move them down and put a banner in the bottom or something again this pink matches her lipstick matches this teddy bear thing you know the blue 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 pink against pink yeah it's thinking about the kind of color overall color scheme so i'm expecting you to be using this kind of terminology in your evaluation if you've got any questions feel free to ask um there are other tutorials available on youtube i'll be sending you the handouts to go with this as well okay any questions you know where i am talk to you next time